Fitzgerald, thank you very much for joining us under these very difficult circumstances because you're the programme director of the Galway Film FLA. This would probably be one of your busiest months in the lead-in to the Film FLA, which normally is held in July. You've had to cancel the physical part of the Film FLA for very obvious reasons, and now you're going online. But tell me, um, how difficult was it to make that decision not to hold it in the, its traditional way? It was very difficult and we came to it uh, sort of by degrees. A big part of the FLA's identity would be the social element to it and um, the sort of intimate atmosphere that Galway provides. It's, um, I think, a large part of the reason why it's, you know, so well regarded and why people like to come. Um, so we, we ourselves were initially hesitant about the idea of going online. We didn't feel it was very um, FLA-like. Um, and we looked for a long time at the possibility of postponing as well as possibly being an option. Um, but, you know, even back then, not knowing when cinemas were going to open, but thinking that even when they would, social distancing would probably still be in place, which we now know that, you know, when they will open and that will be a factor. Um, so we took the plunge to go online and um, the more we thought about it and the more we looked into the technology that was there to realize um, all the various elements of it, we started to get excited It'll be very different, um, no question about it. Um, but it'll be it'll be an interesting experiment. You know how people are going to engage with films, how we'll be able to engage audiences um, and artists. Um, to how to what degree can we maintain the same level of business getting done in our marketplace? All these things were. We're really excited to, to find out. You know. Before we get into what it, it, it's going to look like, Will, um, tell me normally, under normal circumstances, how it would have operated, because it's been going since 1989. This would have been your 32nd edition. It's held over six days, a mix of a festival part of it, where people will go to see films, and then the marketplace aspect of it. How does that all work? Um, yeah, it's, um, it runs for six days every July. Uh, we kick off with an opening night film and then from there we run for five days full tilt, um, no, no holes barred. We would have up to um, four different films playing at any one time across uh, two to three different venues. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, you know, physical interaction is, is a huge part of it. Um, just that being there, seeing things on the big screen, uh, being able to see filmmakers face to face to ask your questions, um, s simple things like shaking hands with people when you're, you know, discussing a project or if you're proposing a, a new collaboration, a new working relationship. Um, so we had to rethink all these things. We had to we had to think about, you know, um, if if a physical event space isn't holding us together, what does togetherness look like then, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to look very and, different this year. And, and tell me a little bit more about that, because of course, there's so many different businesses having to grapple with this. And particularly we say anybody involved in events, whether it's a festival or a conference, they're having to replace it with an online version. How are you going to do that? Um, it's well, we decided early on, once we started thinking about it and the technology that was available, that anything that we can do live, we're going to try to do live um to preserve something of the festival experience so such as what live events could you continue to have so for example um the, the film will be streamed uh will be streamed via our website but then we propose to do the actual q a part with the filmmaker as a live stream um that will be integrated with the film stream so that when you're watching at home once the credits roll automatically you are presented with uh say myself as festival director with the filmmaker who made the film in person uh in per uh, well if possible uh if not it will be a, a zoom type situation um and then the plan is to live stream these uh over our social channels um and as part of the film stream as well so that we can take uh questions via social media so that audiences at home can still participate and engage um, and in that way, we hope to kind of keep a sense of a festival of being, you know, together, um, a part of the event. Yeah, because how, how that's a big challenge, you know, when you're, say, somebody who loves films would normally love the whole wonderful aliveness, the atmosphere of going to a film festival and they're there and, and they're watching the film. And as you say, maybe uh, looking at the director afterwards. That experience is very different when you're sitting in your home, possibly on your own. Yeah. How, how, how do you think you're going to be able to engage people, keep, keep them interested and, and keep them still involved in the process? 
Uh, it took a lot of thinking um, because we had to, and again, this was even, you know, the early planning stages of this were weeks before now when we didn't have as clear a picture of what the phases were going to be, of how long people would have been in lockdown, how sick they would have been of, you know, sitting on, the, on their couch watching films, uh, you know, for entertainment as possibly one of the only avenues of entertainment that they have. And we were having to predict like what are, what is audience behavior going to be? Um, so one of the ways that we're trying to um, mitigate that and maintain festival uh, a, fast, a festival atmosphere is, you know, I mentioned during the course of a regular FLA, we would have maybe four films playing opposite each other at any one time to offer a choice as part of the festival experience. And we decided part of the festival experience being online is actually scaling back some of that, removing some of that choice. Um, so instead of playing films against each other, our plan is to only play one film at a time. Um, the idea being that the conversation around that and, you know, all the live elements that we incorporate into that will all be focused on one film, one filmmaker's work, one conversation at a time. So again, giving you that sense of we're all in this together, um, you know, as opposed to three or four people, you know, if three different people watching at home, watching three different films, taking part in three different conversations, um, if that makes sense. And and what about then the the ownership of the film and, and the security of the film? Because am I right in saying at a film festival, you might have a premiere, but, but the film may not be released for some time later. Once you take it online, it, it doesn't that present difficulties in terms of ensuring, you know, that there aren't pirated copies, for example, of that film going around the place because it's now gone online and it might be easy to copy it or record it. Yeah, it's it's a concern, definitely. It's I, it's one of the filmmakers' um, main concerns from talking to them um, about this on, proposed online event. Um, a big factor here is obviously all the technicality that's going to be needed for hosting an online festival. And uh, we've partnered with a digital solution called Festival Scope, um, and they've partnered with a streaming service called Shift72. So we're looking in that they've both been around for a while and they both have good reputations in the industry. Um, Festival Scope has for a long time been a platform for uh, streaming films for people in the industry. So they would, you know, stream films for, for buyers at, you know, like say the Marshall de Film at Cannes, for example, and things like that. And then Shift72 is a New Zealand based streaming service. So they just have the, the sort of the bandwidth and the capacity for streaming, you know, up to a hundred films, for example, so for a festival. So together they've created a, a kind of bespoke festival solution um, that offers the kind of ease of access that we need and the security that filmmakers need. So it's, you know, studio grade uh, level digital rights management, um, MPA compliance, I'm not trying to throw letters at you, but yeah. basically all these things amount to a solid, very secure uh, way to stream these films. Um, and with added things like, you know, anti-proxy detection. So um, again, the security is not about being digital. One of the ways that you can offer security and peace of mind to the filmmakers is we've decided for the online festival, it's going to be geolocked to Ireland. So that's another way that just sort of cuts out a lot of the, you know, potential you pirating know, or whatever pirating else that, that yeah. might be out there. Um, and that ensures a sort of continuity as well in the festival circuit in terms of, you know, when we're asking a filmmaker for a film, we're not asking to to premiere it to the entire world and taking away their chance of, say, screaming it, streaming it um, at Toronto in September, for example. We only want to show it to an Irish audience as we would be if we were having the physical festival in July. And what about the marketplace then? Because that's also a very important aspect to the film FLAS, indeed to many other of the famous film festivals around the world, where potentially filmmakers who've got projects to finish and need the funding to do so, that's when you get the wheeling and dealing and they're meeting those who have the funding perhaps to fund those projects that funders might want to fund. That's obviously not going to happen physically. What are the alternatives that you can offer then from a digital perspective? Uh, yeah, again, the, the technology is there. We've all kind of um, shifted our, our working um, habits um, over the lockdown to things like Zoom, which is going to be a major part of the marketplace this year. Um, and another festival solution that we're looking at, a digital solution we're looking at is called B2 Square, which is uh, similar to um, apps like Zoom and like sort of house party that people have been using for, for socializing during the lockdown. Um, so we will, be, we will st still be putting... Um, you know, filmmakers with projects in development, with financiers and distributors and sales agents in face-to-face -face meetings, but albeit through the medium of a screen. Um, in some ways, it'll be, you know, easier and more interesting in terms of um, things that filmmakers need to bring in with them to a meeting, for example, 
um, you know, seeing as everything will be done through a digital medium, if you have a, a trailer to show a prospective buyer or a financier or something, it's all there as part of your online profile. Um, and you don't need to sort of, um, you know, be bringing 10 different things into a meeting with you. Um, for some people, I think it might be easier through the medium of a screen to pitch their film. You know, it can be, it be, it can be quite nerve wracking as a filmmaker to walk into the marketplace in Galway um, and be faced with that large room with uh, over 60 different, you know, financiers from around Europe and the UK and the States um, all around you and everybody pitching their project. Whereas in, in the digital scape, it will just be you and the one other person that you're talking to, maybe with your you know, producing partner as well. Um, and that's it, you know, so it's going to be interesting. And what about the other major festivals? Uh, Cannes has been canned for it the has. moment. Um, and there's Venice and Toronto coming up as well. But these are the very, very big international film festivals. What are going to be the plans for can now um are they doing something online they are they they've cancelled the festival um but their their marketplace the marche du film um they have put online uh this year um it's interesting to see how many um uh, people are going to take advantage of it um the extent to which the industry is engaging with it um i think they'll see you know less sort of traffic this year albeit you know online traffic instead of footfall um, I think one of the ways that Galway, that the FLA will actually uh, benefit from being in the calendar where we are is that a few people have actually, you know, trialed and errored this process before us. Um, I think the Marche uh, has come along possibly a little too early in the, in the film festival calendar in terms of everything went on hold when we went on lockdown. Um, productions froze, um, filmmakers were you know, unsure about putting things online. Um, at the moment, as the Marche is happening, I think people are slowly coming around to the idea that this is the new normal, um, that the, the marketplace has to continue to move forward in some fashion. Um, and I think by July, we will have a healthy slate of projects to, for filmmakers to pitch to financiers um, in a way that possibly isn't there right now for larger markets like can. And what about just making films? You mentioned there that, of course, all of these just ground to a halt when the pandemic uh, became a serious emergency. So all filming stopped. How are films going to be made in the future? Well, foreseeable future until, you know, hopefully there'll be a vaccine for this thing. Films, documentaries, television, programmes. Is there a sort of a plan emerging as to how these things can be made, bearing in mind the social distancing norms that we might all have to get used to? Um, you know, I think those are probably better qualified people than me to speak to physical production. Um, but I don't see how they would in the, under the current circumstances. I know from talking to filmmakers um, that would be facing into uh, physical productions, you know, they were hoping to start back in, say, August. Um, everyone's really nervous about being the first one out of the trap. Um, everyone is kind of aware that there's going to be pitfalls. Everyone is aware that you can't operate uh, a, a, a physical set uh, for a, a feature production as we know it um, and implement two meter distancing. It's two meter distancing. It's not really feasible. Um, so those are all hurdles that will have to be overcome. Um, I don't have the best answer for it. Um, what I am encouraged by right now is the amount of um, development that I see happening. Um, you know, writers have been working away furiously during this time, uh, polishing off scripts, uh, projects that have been in development are getting more love and attention, which I think um, can only benefit the projects in the long term. Um, I've always maintained that it's um, something we need to do more of in the Irish industry. Um, I think we have, you know, we have some of the best, most skilled crews in the world, which is why international productions love to come here. And I think we just we're always anxious as, as an industry, as a national industry, to be making things and to be rushing things into production. Um, and I've always advocated, advocated for more development time. And I think, you know, films are going to get it uh, during this period. Uh, Screen Ireland, uh, the, the National Film Agency have just announced some great new initiatives um, to giving more development support to screenwriters and to giving directors um, more creative agency to develop their ideas further. And I think that's all good stuff that's going to show that, I think that's the stuff that I hope we carry with us um, from this whole thing. And what about just funding 
those in the creative industries at the moment, we know there have been complaints about not enough money being channeled towards people in the creative industries. They don't work as maybe normal industries where they might have their, you know, I don't know, P, P45s, P60s or whatever, the paperwork that's required. Are you hearing um, stories of people really struggling now in, in, in the film and the creative industries? Yeah, it, it's hard. Um, I was, uh, I, I noticed just um, on Twitter actually uh, over the weekend, uh, an actress who won our um, New Talent Award at Galway just two years ago was talking about how, you know, the summer is traditionally when she would make her income um, for the year because she's also a student. Um, she studies uh, during the year and then in the summer she would shoot a series or do a film and that's when she would make her income. And that's not going to happen this year. And because she wasn't working before the lockdown happened, she was still studying as a student. She doesn't benefit from any of the, the government subsidies or schemes that are in place. So, you know, it's great that we have a lot of new initiatives taking place, um, but there's always going to be people that fall through the cracks and such is the nature with, um, with art support, I feel, especially in Ireland. It's, um, yeah, we don't, we don't do enough. I, I think when you look at the German model um, and how things like uh, rent controls are being put in place to try and protect um, artists, you know, I think we really need more of that here. Um, in Ireland, um, I think it was Thierry Frimo, the, the director of the Cannes Film Festival, was saying in an interview just this past weekend how, you know, in 2008, we bailed out the banks um, and 2020 should really be the time when we look at bailing out our cinemas, our live theatre venues, um, our artists. I think that should be where the focus is right now. And just before we go, Will, um, the film flies, we said it's not going to happen like it normally has, but this would have been its 32nd edition. How significant has it been in raising the profile of Irish filmmakers and Irish films? The FLA, uh, I think very. It's, uh, it's ingrained into its identity. Um, it was founded by um, a group of filmmakers who wanted to make a platform for filmmakers where there wasn't uh, one at the time back in 89. Um, and we've continued to, to carry that you know, with us as our mission statement. Um, the, the many international um, industry delegates that do come here tend to come to see what's new in Irish cinema. Um, we had uh, 40 different festival programmers from international festivals at the festival last year who come to Galway um, you know, for their programming, uh, for their festivals. Um, so I think that's you know, amazing. And it's, again, part of the reason why we made this decision um, to pivot to a digital event. Uh, there were concerns about, you know, would this be the same? Would it feel the same? Would it have the same flavor? But when we look at our mission statement and I think, well, we want to be a platform where none exists. Well, that was a very flat thing to do then was to, you know, keep the keep the show on the road. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it. It's going to be a new adventure, um, but it sounds like you have a, a lot of the groundwork done. I hope it's a really great success and thanks very much for joining me today. Thanks, man.